Hey, I'm Fishnark, and today I'm going to be reading The Oldest Ecosystems on Earth by Ferris Jaber from Nautilus Magazine. When it comes to biological superlatives, we typically focus on individuals, the largest tree in the forest, the oldest organism on Earth. But I recently began to wonder about superlative communities. What are the oldest existing ecosystems on Earth, and what can we learn from them? Certain ecosystems on the planet today have persisted for hundreds of thousands to tens of millions of years, preserving somehow their defining characteristics despite undergoing changes. Precisely what it means for an entire living system to be so old, and what makes such astonishing longevity possible, challenge our very notions of what it is to be alive. One of our planet's oldest ecosystems is a vast meadow about the size of Manhattan. You will never see any bees or butterflies flitting through it, however. This meadow grows along the seafloor by two Spanish islands. Like all meadows, it is composed primarily of plants, in this case, seagrasses. Scientists have calculated that these grasses must have been spreading through the region for somewhere between 80 to 200,000 years. They speculate that as global climate changed and sea level rose and fell, the meadow has shifted its range. Elsewhere in the ocean, there are even bigger and older ecosystems, coral reefs. Australia's Great Barrier Reef spans 133,000 square miles, is visible from space, and is often regarded as the largest living structure on Earth just as impressive as its age. Scientists think the Great Barrier Reef was born about 500,000 to 600,000 years ago. Scientists have revealed a similar long-term persistence of coral reefs in Papua New Guinea. To form reefs, corals first need to attach to a rocky surface. When a reef suffers a calamity, such as a hurricane, the calcified remains of dead corals can become the foundation on which survivors build anew. When sea levels drop, large portions of reef can become exposed and die. Conversely, when seas swell, Large sections can drown in turbid waters. These motions steer the course of the Great Barrier Reef as it gradually migrates seaward or landward, maintaining its continuity through time. Perhaps the oldest currently surviving ecosystems, however, are on land. Some tropical rainforests have likely persisted in the same general region with the same essential characteristics for tens of millions of years. By roughly 60 million years ago, with the continents in relatively similar configurations as today, the Americas had rainforests with the same basic features and plant families as the ones that live there now. Scientists have concluded that the Amazon rainforest has been a feature of South America for some 55 million years. Scientists have unearthed a parallel story of rainforest longevity in Australia. Putting bounds on these amorphous ancient entities is changing. How exactly do we determine when an ecosystem, with all its complexity and fungibility, was born, or when it dies? Oldest ecosystems on the planet today are undoubtedly different from their earlier versions. Their borders, topography, and species have all shifted through the millennia. Although the fossil record is spotty, the Great Barrier Reef almost certainly had a different biodiversity profile 400,000 years ago. And the Amazon River, such a defining feature of today's Amazon rainforest, did not form until about 11 million years ago. Nevertheless, if we could travel back hundreds of thousands or millions of years, these ecosystems would be uncannily familiar because they have maintained their essential characteristics, the relationships and frameworks that define them, for an astoundingly long time. To better understand such longevity, we must identify what underlies it. Seagrass meadows, coral reefs, and rainforests share several qualities. They're all in the tropics, which tend to be less climactically volatile than more extreme latitudes. They're all founded by organisms that are highly resilient and adaptable. And, to some extent, they all create or reinforce the very conditions they need to survive. By slowing waves, trapping sediments, performing photosynthesis, filtering water, and sequestering carbon, seagrass meadows and coral reefs make their environments calmer, clearer, less acidic, and more nutrient-rich, all around more habitable. Likewise, rainforests generate much of the rain on which they depend by dramatically accelerating the water cycle. Cloud formation relies on two essential ingredients, water vapor and particles on which that vapor can condense. Rainforests provide both. The result is a self-reinforcing feedback loop. The more it rains, the more the forest grows. The more the forest grows, the more it rains. Scientists have calculated that the Amazon rainforest generates about half the rain that falls on it each year. The extreme longevity of ecosystems underscores the importance of the bonds between such large-scale systems and their organisms. Ecosystems may not have singular genomes or participate in standard Darwinian evolution. They are capable of growing, surviving, and evolving because they are inescapably intertwined with the growth survival, and evolution of the organisms that comprise them. Yet even living systems as ancient and resilient as rainforests and reefs are neither impervious nor immortal. Most periods of climactic turmoil that the planet's ecosystems have survived so far unfolded much more gradually than the rate at which humans are transforming the air, land, and sea today. By the end of the century, warm water coral reefs may be all but destroyed by global warming, and the Amazon's self-reinforcing rain cycle is getting terrifyingly close to breaking. Even faced with these dire possible outcomes, however, there is a kind of solace in looking at ecology through the lens of deep time, 
in recognizing the remarkable tenacity of Earth's longest lived communities. Humanity's power is outsized, but not infinite. As a whole, life's tendency is to endure and recover, discovering new forms over thousands to millions of years. This topic really interests me. And anyway, my name is Fishnark. Uh, I'm from Gothway Click. I made a new record, it's coming out on K. I'm going to be playing a bunch of gigs on my own and with Gothway Click in the uh, coming months. So I hope to see some of you guys at the shows. Good stuff.